Oh, okay. Uh, hey, Garner. Um, what's new? What's been going on? Uh, what's going on? What's been happening? Anything exciting? Anything, uh, worthwhile? Um, the answer is no. Nothing's been on the go. Nothing's been exciting. Nothing's been been hat hatin in. Uh pretty much go to work, come home. And I work till five. And if I'm not home by six, that's gonna be in trouble. Because in Ontario, if you're caught outside after six PM, you get shot dead. They'll shoot you in the street and then leave you there for 24 hours as an example. So, tough look. Not a bad look, but a tough look. It's not a situation you want to be in, but it's not like, uh, like, oh, wow, that person's a piece of shit. Wouldn't want to be that guy. You don't want to be that guy, but it's it's not like a, it's not like gonna hurt your character too much, getting shot dead in the street by the government. Um, so I've just been uh, it's pretty. You know what, dude? It's pretty much, um, pretty much Netflix and sports. Um, baseball's back. That's exciting. Baseball. Very, very fun sport. Very fun to watch, especially if you're playing fantasy. Um, if you're a casual person and you're looking to um, go to a new level in your uh, sports viewing, I recommend playing a fantasy uh, pool with your friends or randoms. You can play with randoms online. That's pretty fun. Make some new friends. Um, I mean, it's the best game on my phone. So, that's been fun. It can also be extremely frustrating. You'll start hating people who you otherwise wouldn't. Um, but I got recommended to watch this, uh, this pirate show on Netflix. Now, it's not really a show. It's like half a show, half documentary. They'll be like historians talking about some kind of era or some kind of scene that happened back in the day with these pirates. And then they like act it out. I mean, the show could have been better if they cut out the people interrupting and like giving you like backstory and <clears throat> talk, giving you some facts. But. And as I'm watching this, I'm just, I got this question, like, how the, how, how do these, um, quote unquote historians know anything? Like, fuck, what was this show called? Um, I have no idea what it was called. It had the name Byard in it though, I think, on Netflix. But the way these people were talking is like, they know. Like, they're talking about people's personality. Like, oh, yeah, so in this situation, this guy was really heated. He would have said this. He would have acted like this. This is how he treated people. It's like, hey, dude, how do you know that? I get, like, you can read, like, old books. Like, fuck, like they're saying, like, oh, yeah, this guy said this. And then he went and did this. But, like... Like, where are, you, where are you getting that from? From what? Someone wrote down in a book? Like, you found a journal? Like, yeah, Captain so-and-so was a real dick today. Like, I just... They kind of, like, turned me off the show because these people are talking like they're fucking buddies with the people. They know exactly who they are. And it's just, like, you don't. You just don't. You can read your... Your old book, your old tr 
transcripts. I don't even know an ancient scribe. Like a, you unravel a scroll and it's just like a story. I don't know how they know these things. You found a fucking, you found a wood plank. Um, oh, oh, in the Caribbean washed up on shore. And then all of a sudden, you know, hundreds of years of history. And like, if, if this person's every move and every thought, get the fuck out of here, dude. So that was kind of annoying, but I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe they do have a, uh, like a textbook on like, and somebody recorded every word someone said, every detail of their character. I don't know, dude. I didn't look it up. These people did. But the sh- like the, the actual show part, I feel like it could have been better if it was just like a show and not not a docu series. The um you could tell the budget for this uh docu series was rather low. They they used the same CGI in a lot of scenes. Um the story was like kind of interesting. It was just like typical pirates fucking each other over. But I don't really have much much else to say about it other than I think these historian people are a little like they're 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 taking it a little too far tell me the facts okay tell me the dates tell me the facts but don't act like you know these people okay um the what else oh um I watched uh Godzilla, Godzilla vs. Kong the other day and um I mean again not not much to say on this uh this movie I I guess the the fight scenes were pretty cool but it was like your typical like not good acting the story made no sense plot holes all over the place but like they they put up the money for the CGI which you appreciate some stuff looked cool um going into it I I guessed I kind of had a guess like what was going to happen because they're not they're not going to actually have Godzilla and King Kong fight each other that's just not going to happen they're, there's just going to be a new new big bad guy's going to show up and they're going to work together. And guess what? Um if you're looking at this from like a uh a, a logistics standpoint, Godzilla would destroy King Kong. King Kong doesn't have a chance. Godzilla's bigger. He's got scales. He's got claws and he can shoot magic out of his mouth. King Kong's just a giant monkey. Okay? He has no chance against Godzilla. They kind of evened out the fight that Godzilla or King Kong found this like ancient huge axe, which was ripped right from fucking Thor or. Yeah, right from uh, Thor in uh, Avengers Infinity War. Ripped right from it. This thing even like shot out electricity. It was fucking dumb. But. Is it is it worth a, a watch? I guess. I guess. You can have it on in the background while you're doing something else. Background TV is pretty good for when you're like socializing or something. But this movie is exactly what you think it would be. If you're going into this movie stoked. Uh, uh, I mean, actually... Sometimes movies are, like, so bad they're kind of funny and worth watching. This movie's close. Speaking of so bad. Speaking of so bad, it's worth watching. (laughs) Okay. Saturday night, I watched the funniest show, the funniest broadcast I've seen in an extremely long time. This was absolute gold. I was crying laughing multiple times. 
It was fantastic. And that was the Jake Paul versus Ben Askren boxing match. This shit was so funny. <laughs> like, I, I don't even know how to how to start or how to explain this to, unless, like, to somebody who hasn't watched it. You just gotta, like, tune in, like, next time Jake Paul fights somebody, tune in. Tune in. This shit was so, it was so bad, but, like, hilarious, because it was so bad. Like, this was a four-hour event, and I think there were three fights, three boxing matches. The first boxing match was, like, a DJ, I think, against a YouTube guy. Fantastic. Um, and then they just have, like, musical performances and, like, shit banter. Like, oh, let's go see what Snoop Dogg's doing. Snoop Dogg's got, like, a plastic cup and he's rolling a joint. He's like, yeah, what's up? We chilling here at the Trilla Fight Club. Yeah, what's up? <laughs> and then they, they, uh, there was fucking, there was one point there was Ric Flair. Ric Flair was, like, refereeing a slap fight. <laughs> he shows up, his face is, like, beat red, and he just goes, woo, woo. And he's talking, and it's like, this guy's fucking out of his mind. And they do this slap fight in some cage. <laughs> it's fucking hilarious. Like, I don't know how to explain this, dude. You have to tune in next time. But it would be like an hour and a half of performances and like these shitty skits and like banter. And then, actually it wasn't shitty skits. This was a very good production. Um, and then there'd be another boxing match. And then it would be like two hours of playing. Like They actually had some like good performances. Like Justin Bieber was there, Snoop Dogg, Ice Cube, and then a couple other guys. Did like some songs. Um, Sweetie was there. Um, fuck. I think there was somebody else, but I don't know. Can't remember. But so they would do that this production thing. Then they would talk to people, and it was like two hours, two and a half hours in between fights, and then finally, the main event. Ben Askren, Jake Paul. Ben Askren is the definition of a milk bag. This guy's body is just a bag of milk that's been sitting outside for an extended period of time. Um, and then Jake Paul comes out to like, with like this robot thing behind him. The thing looked pretty cool. I think it was a person, but this thing was like a giant robot. It looked pretty cool. Um, but the fight lasted like a minute. And then Jake knocked him down. He didn't KO him. He kind of like knocked him down. Ben got up. but was like kind of wobbly. And they called the fight. Which is probably a good idea. But then like Ben Askren's all smiles as he's walking away. So I bet he got paid for that bullshit. I bet he got paid. So good for him. Good for him good for Jake Paul dude keep going just keep going keep going I want him to fight like like just keep going keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger and then also more people start doing this the the this like bullshit celebrity like YouTube people boxing it's better than real boxing it's more entertaining it's more fun you watch like a boxing pay-per-view and it's like yeah well like uh I think uh, he's going to do a lot of jabbing. He's going to work his jabbing. He's going to work work to the right. And he's going to try and lock him up if it gets too close. Uh, boring. This shit was funny. And they had musical performances. Sick. Um, But yeah. Keep going. Keep doing this shit. I'm going to watch next time they do this. This shit was fucking hilarious. I can't describe how funny this was. Um... Fuck, what was I going to say? I don't remember what I was going to say. But that was fun. Watch that Saturday. Um, oh, other news this week. 
Um, some guy over in the UK it was big deal apparently. Philippe, I don't know if he was a prince or a king or a duke, but it was a big deal. This guy's 134, died, dead. And it's like, oh my god, Philip's dead. Oh god. And it's just like, who cares? <laughs> like, outside of the actual royal family, who cares? I don't, like, I'm not going to say I don't understand how people could like that because people like anything and are fans of anything. And it's some people's job. Dude, imagine your job is to cover the royal family. So boring. What do these people do? They don't do anything. They, like, hide. You don't hear from them. And then there's, like, a, a funeral. And it's like, oh, my God, funeral. Did you see? Did you see that they walked in together? Did you see that they were sitting next to each other? Oh, they didn't even look at each other. Did you see that? And they all dress like they're... It's still 1952. Grow up. You gotta dress all fancy and be proper. So boring. Start being like the like the USA's royal family. The Kardashians. They're fun. They're entertaining. They flex. Buy a bunch of property. They buy a bunch of cars. They're dating basketball players. Rappers. They post sexy pics online. Where's the queen's sexy pic online? Where's queen... Is it Victoria or Elizabeth? Where's her, like, thirst trap on Instagram? Come on. Be more like the Kardashians. The royal family's so boring. Oh, well. I don't know. Being in a royal family would be probably pretty cool, but also kind of, like, imprisoning. All your socials have to be with other people who are royal... Or in your family. You want to go out for a night on the town. And in London it's like. Oh, did you hear? Did you hear that Prince Ralph. Went to London. He went out to a club with the regular plebs. Oh, oh my god. He should be kicked out and banned from. The castle. How dare he. He must be cleansed. Or like. Maybe you're a royal person, you go to the city for a soccer match. And before the soccer match, you go to a cafe to grab a coffee, and there's a there's a lady there that you fancy. But you can't talk to this girl. You can't hang out with this girl. You can't ask her out. No. You gotta marry the Duchess of fucking Burnley. Whether you like it or not. Oh, this pleb from the city has no royal blood on her family how dare you even look at her you have to marry a duchess kind of uh kind of imprisoning but but you get to, you can get pretty much anything else that you want you got royal you're part of the royal clique you can get away with anything you're never going to get in trouble for shit. You just chill in the castle all day. People serving you. Not too bad. But in terms of picking your friends or picking your lovers, you might be a little restricted. So, it has its ups and downs being, being a royal. But, like, um... Someone in the royal family's got to, like, show up in the new age. Reinvent the image of the royal family. Stop with this old school bullshit. It's boring. Nobody cares. You're acting like it's 1700 still. Wear some sweats. Buy some sunglasses. Buy some Nikes. Buy some leather pants. Post a pic on Instagram. Get an Instagram. Do these people have Instagram? Figure it out. Who's the marketing team for the royal family? Who's the publicist? Fire them all. Hire somebody in their 20s. Stop acting fancy. It's boring.
the weather's getting nicer. It's getting a little bit more sunny, a little warmer. We're phasing out of the winter time. There's been some some flurries, but um, for the most part, winter's gone. When you switch out your winter tires, I switched out my winter tires this weekend. You know winter's gone when you switch out your winter tires. It's a good sign. Something I noticed about winter, actually, one thing before I say that, the when it gets like spring, my allergies are dog shit. I wake up in the morning and my eyes are just crying. My nose is a faucet and my eyes are crying. My eyes are just beat red until lunch. People I work with probably think I'm blitzed out of my mind. But that's pretty shitty. Like, you're just like rubbing your eyes constantly and just gets more itchy. You're just like an addict. Like a fiend. Sucks. Go away, allergies. But something I've noticed is that winter stinks. It doesn't smell good. You wake up in the morning and it's winter. Outside just smells like gasoline. Winter smells like gasoline and cigarettes. I don't know why. Is it because Ed, there's no other smells going on? Is it because the trees are all dead and they're not filtering out <clears throat> that good air? Like, you, you get up in the morning for work, you're, like, wiping off your car. All you smell is gasoline and cigarettes. The wind's sharp. You breathe through your nose, and it's just, like, knives going into your brain. I can't even, like... Like, does... I can't even recall, like, a nice smell in winter. It just smells like nothing. Except gasoline and cigarettes. But now you go outside, and it's, like... You can smell shit. You can smell dirt, grass, trees, still gasoline. Someone's cooking stuff. I don't know. Water. You can smell water. Birds. There's just more smells in the summer and springtime. In the wintertime, there are no good smells. <clears throat> 